Huge sections of the West Antarctica ice sheet may be destined to fall apart, slide into the ocean, and melt away, with the potential of raising the sea level worldwide by 10 feet or more. That's the worst case scenario, one of several projected by APLUW glaciologist Ian Jockett, lead author of a new study published in the journal Science. It's a lot easier at this point to see, foresee it collapsing in its that vulnerable part in its entirety, um, but really we have a wide range of uh, estimates on how long that could take. So for example, if it's 10 feet of sea level rise over a millennium, um, then that's one foot per century, which is not all that extraordinary. I mean, we're, we're looking at about one per, per century is the current rate of sea level rise now. If it happens in 200 years, that's five feet per century, and that is a lot, and that is something we, we would have to contend with. Scientists say West Antarctic glaciers have now retreated to the point of creating inherent instability in the ice sheet. Jochen says his computer model, simulating the behavior of the ice sheet, indicates that it is likely too late to halt this glacial retreat. So what we've been seeing recently along the Amundsen coast, um, and many other groups have seen this too, is that the ice is thinning rapidly and the glaciers have sped up. For example, Pine Island Glacier was going 23, 2500 meters a year or so, um, the speed near the grounding line. Um, in the uh, 70s and 80s and 90s, and now it's going more like 4,000 meters a year. So these are really big speed ups. Uh, the nice thing at the model was that it actually fairly well reproduced the losses in this glacier over the last um, 18 years or so. Very matches it quite well with the higher melt scenarios that we're using, which is consistent with the idea that there has been a much more warm water coming in lately, um, and therefore much more melting under the ice shelf. And in fact, then when we just looked what our model was producing for melt and compared it with what others had estimated the melt rate should be, it fell pretty much right in the middle of the range of two estimates of the amount of melting that should be going on. Jockin's findings are similar to another major study of the Antarctic ice sheet, this one by NASA scientists. We passed the point of no return in this sector. And at this point, we'll say it's just a matter of time before these glaciers completely disappear to sea. How much time? Scientists say that depends on what steps are taken to combat warming temperatures. A key thing that the model shows, and, and somewhat what we expected, is that the, the rate of this um, collapse of the, uh, this glacier really depends on the amount of melting going on. So when we had the melt cranked up really high, it, was, uh, it took a little over 200 years to disintegrate, and when we um, dialed it back to what we thought normally would have kept it in sort of a stable state, it still would continued. This sort of process had already begun, this sort of feedback, and it's come, become somewhat self-sustaining. At that point, the model um, took around 900 years for it to sort of get a real rapid collapse going, though we are definitely in the early stages of collapse now. Science at work for you. This is APL, the Applied Physics Laboratory at the University of Washington in Seattle.